I will start by telling you essentially what is the definition of the Lagrangian function. We are familiar from introductory mechanics of what is kinetic energy and what is the potential energy of the system. I do want to remind you kinetic energy is about the motion of the system, the potential energy is about in conservative interactions that take place inside the system. Now if you take the difference of those two, EK minus EP, that's what we define as the Lagrangian. Okay, that's the definition. Now we know we, we also define sorry, one more definition. We define as the action integral to be the integral from one time, one moment in time, t1 to another one, t2 of L dt, where L is the Lagrangian that I just defined. And by uh, the action integral symbol that we use is S. Okay, another definition, the integral of L um, of L dt. Now, in general, in general, the Lagrangian will be a function of the generalized coordinates q1, q2, q3. Again, um, what do those mean? Um, uh, it, they could be x, they could be y, they could be z, they could be r, they could be theta, phi, and so on. I'm not specifying, okay? Generalized coordinates and they, the Lagrangian can also depend on the generalized velocities and it can also depend on time. Now, all right, um, so this is the action integral and I, I want to uh, review the, the mechanics that you did in introductory physics. When we, when we wanted to predict the motion in introductory mechanics, we said we need to find the forces, the forces acting on the system, and from those forces we could use Newton's second law to find the acceleration of the system and from there we could find velocity and position. So in introductory mechanics, if I wanted to predict the path, the motion that an object would would have, I would need to know all the forces acting on the system and I would have to use Newton's second law to find how the object will move. What I'm going to tell you now, Hamilton's principle, is one more way to do exactly that. And this is more powerful than Newton's second law. And it is easier. The system, a mechanical system, will move, so it will follow a path so that the action integral S is stationary with respect to small variations in the path. Okay? This is uh, the, es essentially one more way that you can use to predict the motion of an object. Hamilton's principle. Now, what does it mean that the the path um, in small variations to the path? Let me show you here. So, this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. Just an example. And let's say... I have the path, I have one path. So this will be the initial, that's, um, or one, this will be one and that will be two. Okay, let's stick with that, one and two. If, um, if, if I know that this is the path, the trajectory that my system will take, then I know for any other path, say this one, the integral of L d t will have a different value. The action integral will take will take a, a different value. If I specify that I, I'm looking at um, let's say a minimum, that the action integral is a minimum. Okay, stationary stationary could be minimum or or maximum. Um, let, if I specify that in this case the action integral is a minimum along the red path, the correct path if you want, then if the system follows the blue line, the blue path, the action integral will be higher, a greater number 
than the action integral if you use this path. Similarly, if you follow, if the system follows any other path, then again, the action integral in that case along this blue path will be a greater number, a higher number compared to what the action integral is along the right, the red path. Now this, so Hamilton's principle essentially is, is telling me how the system will move. Okay. It will move uh, along the red path. That's the one that gives me a stationary action integral. Now we know from Euler Lagrange's or uh, the Euler Lagrange equations that for Hamilton's principle to be true, I need to have some uh, uh, I need to have these equations to be valid. And essentially this is these are the Euler These are the Euler Lagrange equations in as applied to Hamilton's principle. Now here you see three equations and that's because I have three generalized coordinates. Now comparing this to Newton's second law, Remember, whenever we applied Newton's second law, I had one equation for x, one for y, one for z, if I was using the Cartesian coordinate system. Something similar is going on here. This is the Euler-Lagrange equation for the q1 generalized coordinate. This is the same thing for q2. This is the same thing for q3. Okay. This is the equivalent of saying Newton's second law in the x direction, Newton's second law in the y direction, Newton's second law in the z direction. But they are all, if you see, they all have the same form. This, the left side, is the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q1. And then on the right side, I have the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized velocity one, dq1 dot. And then once I calculate this, I also have to take the time derivative of that quantity. And I, I do something similar for Q2 and Q3. Okay, so these are, and we call these Lagrange's equation of motion or Lagrange's equation, equations. If at the end of the day, if you solve these, you will know what the motion of the system is. And remember, this is what we were doing in introductory mechanics using Newton's second law as well. Um, we were finding the forces, we were finding the acceleration using Newton's second law and we were predicting the motion. The same thing is true here using Hamilton's principle and the action integral, um, using Lagrange's equations, essentially, at the end of the day, I will be able to predict how the system will move, okay? A different way to get um, the same thing.